when this machine gets turned on, it'll be one of the hottest points in the solar system, if not the hottest point. It's hotter than the core of the sun. A little bit toroidally positive of the center of the chimney. What we're working on here is building our own version of a star on Earth. Imagine if humankind could harness the sun. That's the potential for fusion energy. It's a goal that's eluded researchers for decades, but that promise of fusion energy has investors placing their bets. The industry's attracted $6 billion in funding with Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, part of a growing list of backers. The U.S. government set aside nearly $1.5 billion for fusion research in 2024 alone, a record amount. It is the holy grail. Energy without harmful carbon emissions, without radioactive waste. Fusion technology could be disruptive at an even bigger level than the internet. The only thing is, we don't have a breakthrough yet. A breakthrough resulting in clean and unlimited amounts of energy. Success in research labs like this are critical, with more than 40 companies looking to get fusion power on the grid globally. We were invited in for an exclusive look. So D3D is the largest operating fusion reactor in the United States. We're doing the fundamental research to figure out how we can create a nuclear fusion power plant in the future. You ready? Yep. Lower hybrid. Zero degrees. Nuclear fusion is extremely difficult to do. Okay, other direction. Thanks, let's do a double shot at the bottom. Thank you very much. Three seconds, two, one, shot of progress. The race is on to actually see who can develop this and who can get it to the masses the fastest. inside the machine, it's always a very interesting experience. Before you go in, the first thing you have to do is get suited up. Got a hairnet. Don't want to leave anything behind the reactor. These are dosimeters to measure radiation exposure. To get in, it's a little tight. You have to squeeze in. The stakes are high inside this vacuum chamber known as a tokamak. So we're not on the center. Keep going right there, right there, right there. Other axis. That's actually pretty dead on. All right, sweet. Tucked inside the country's largest magnetic fusion facility, researchers here are attempting to create a star on Earth. Like so chasing the promise of clean energy through a process called nuclear fusion. The word nuclear can be scary. There's definitely a lot of confusion between traditional nuclear power, so nuclear fission, which we currently have today, and nuclear fusion. Nuclear fission takes a very large atom, splits it apart, and the way fusion works is we're going to take two atoms and we're going to smash them together. And when they fuse, they convert some of their mass to energy. So Einstein's famous E equals mc squared equation. Nuclear fusion generally only happens in stars where it's contained by the gravity of its own mass. Here on Earth, what we do is we use strong magnetic fields to create a container called a tokamak. The temperature inside the machine is about 10 times the core of the sun. If you were to make this super hot fusion plasma and it were to touch the wall, then the wall would be immediately vaporized. The idea behind the tokamak is that you're going to make a bottle out of magnetic field, so that way this super hot fusion plasma never touches the walls. We know how to do fusion, but we just can't do it efficiently enough to get more power out than what we put in. And that's the key to making fusion commercially viable, finding a way to generate more energy than scientists used to create that fusion reaction. Last week, scientists at the National Ignition Facility achieved fusion ignition. This is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. 
Researchers at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory achieved that energy gain two years ago, but that reaction lasted less than one billionth of a second, and it was done using lasers, unlike a tokamak, which uses magnets. When NIF, the National Ignition Facility, achieved ignition, they used very powerful lasers to create a reaction in a very small capsule, and that perhaps has difficulties scaling up Whereas what we do here, which is use very large scale, powerful magnets, seems to have a clear path towards a nuclear power plant that could power your home. Those here at D3D are trying to unlock that same breakthrough using magnets with funding from the Department of Energy. That development could pave the path to commercialization. And this is where this very healthy university, U.S. National Laboratory and private industry partnership comes into play. Right now, D3D is an event. What that means is the machine is not operating on a daily basis, but what that means also is that we're upgrading a lot of systems. During this upgrade period, we're installing new systems so that in the future we can test new regimes of science. So for the first time, we're testing a new technology that could improve the heating of the fusion reaction. All right, you ready? Got the head. And I've got the tail. But for the first time, we put these modules into the machine. That's one. Seven one down, eight to go. This system will improve the stability of the plasma. If the plasma fills this volume, and for fusion to happen, you need a hot, dense plasma. And this system helps increase temperature. It adds energy to the plasma and improves stability so that we can have more fusion reactions occur. This is a system that could play a role in designing a future nuclear fusion power plant. The process of getting there is an expensive one. Billions of dollars just to build the reactor. So what we're gonna do is we'll take this out here and then we'll slide this rod in here. So but big name investors are lining up to fund the research because a potential breakthrough could transform industries. Just think, limitless energy, no fossil fuels, no carbon emissions. Which is why you've got Google and Chevron, Bill Gates and Sam Altman, Jeff Bezos, all placing their bets. D3D isn't looking to commercialize this technology. It's laying the groundwork for it. So when D3D is ready to go online, the tokamak's gonna get closed up. We're gonna turn the machine on. Starting setup for shot 555. There's a couple countdown timers. Three seconds, two, one. And then at time zero, everything starts. And you can hear out in the power yard, you can hear a lot of the big electronic equipment making these sounds, these pulsing sounds. Magnetic fields are turned on. We inject gas, and that gas then turns into a plasma. We put in about 20 to 40,000 homes worth of power just to make this fusion plasma hot. And then on top of that, we shoot in electromagnetic waves, and each one of our seven sources puts in about the equivalent of a thousand home kitchen microwaves. We call our plasma discharges that we have shots. They last five to eight seconds. And then it's over. We're gonna collect all this data, and all the science team is gonna work together to figure out what it means. Those seconds may seem short, but it's an eternity for fusion technology. The challenge is to control those reactions long enough so they can sustain the plasma for much longer, months at a time for a commercial power plant. The perennial question for what we do here is, is when? When you will have power on the grid? I've seen estimates within the next couple years for some of these startups to 2050 and beyond. Roughly two dozen other reactors are racing to be first. In France, 35 countries have joined forces to build the world's largest fusion reactor with a price tag of $20 billion. But so far, progress has been slow. You know what I mean? Yeah, so we have 
this guy's a radical, that guy's a radical, this way, right? And then you just adjust whatever you have to on this guy. As research labs like D3D aim to achieve new milestones for energy output, larger tokamaks under construction are looking to extend the length of fusion reactions. At Commonwealth Fusion Systems, an MIT spinoff backed by Google and Bill Gates, researchers hope to fire the first shot in their reactor later next year. ITER in France is expected to come online later this decade. With climate change looming, I think the desire for a technology like nuclear fusion is only going to grow. There's a lot more willingness to talk about unproven types of renewable energy like fusion because we're running out of options. And so you're seeing fusion research appear more and more at these global summits like COP28. Fusion may turn out to be just an enormous game changer. You're seeing politicians like John Kerry talk about it. You're seeing international groups of research come together with promises of funding from various governments. The potential for fusion energy is that we power the world's energy needs for millions of years without harmful environmental impacts. This is a long-term project that could save humanity. The existential question is, will it be ready in time?